What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter, and in this episode, I'm gonna be animating a cartoon scene inside of Figma. That's right, I'm gonna be doing all the animation inside of Figma using interactive components, delays, timing, interactions, and a whole bunch of other fun techniques. That way we don't have to go out to some other sort of video or animating software to create our animated scene. We can do it all inside of Figma. Let's do it. All right, we have our Figma file open. This is our starting file. If you're interested in getting a hold of this starting file, then consider becoming one of my design champions. You can go over to learn.jessyshowalter.com and click on members, um, and you can become a design champion and get access to all of my starting files, like this one and every other video I make. Uh, maybe you'd like that, so jump over there and check that out. I have a starting artboard that's 1920 by 1080 to build our scene on top of, um, because this is gonna be our animated version and this is our static version. And the first thing that you'd want to do is to go through and actually turn each one of these or group all the elements together. For instance, you'd want to come into things like your heart and realize that there's a little tiny thing here that we need to include. You'd group that together. And what you want to group together, first of all, is any element that you want to be static. You want that to be a plate in animation terms. That means um, if we want something to move but not something else to move, we have to establish a plate for something. Like for instance, um, our sun here would be a great example. Maybe we don't want this thing to move, but we want this whole thing to be grouped together and animated together, you'd want to group those together. Or maybe you want all this to be loose and you want these elements, just the eyeball here, you want that to be one component or animated element. You'd grab all those things and you would group them together. And then I'm going to start pulling all of those off the artboard and creating a little library. Now, um, I'm going to show you how to make a couple of these animated components, uh, but if you just look above in the starting file, I have a lot of the components that are already created. Once you create a interactive component, uh, they show up because they're components over in your assets library here on the left hand side. And if I wanted to, you know, bring for instance, um, let's do, I don't know, like a couple of these music notes out here that we have going and maybe this heart. All I'd have to do is press play on my prototype and it's going to load up inside of Figma and you'll see that I've already added some, just some cute little jittery kind of animation to these, right? So I'm going to go through the process of how I made these. I just wanted to save you the time of having to make all of them, every single one in this tutorial. We'll just focus on a couple of the big ones, all right? So for example, when I talk about big ones, I have uh, a few elements over here. I have a rainbow and a cloud and I have this teapot, all right? And now the teapot is still uh, all, all kind of cut up into all of its separate pieces. You can see as I select those, there are all these different layers here, lots and lots of layers, and that's not what I want. I want to actually create um, and group, like I talked about, the elements that are necessary. Now, one quick thing, I have already animated the arms, so I have uh, the first set of arms and the second set of arms, but I don't have the legs um, and I don't have the eyes, I don't think, or maybe I do have some eyes, uh, but I don't have the rest of the pot. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete the arms knowing that I already got the arms covered, okay? And this just a couple pieces that we'll just get out of there. Good, okay. Now, I think I also have the eyes, so I'm going to get rid of the eyes because we don't need that, right? And we have the reference to go back to if we ever need it, but we do have the smile, which is one thing. Let's look and see, do we have the smile already created? We don't, okay, so we're gonna need to do that. I'm thinking about my plate is probably gonna be the pot itself, right? So the pot itself will be a plate um, that has the stem or the spout kind of all connected, uh, the stem and the spout, excuse me. So I'm gonna grab everything here in the smile, the nose, these little cheeks, I'm gonna group it together, I'm gonna to move it off to the side. See, now we have one piece. We can animate that independent, right? Um, or we can just keep it grouped here. You'll see what I'm saying here in a second. Then I'm gonna select everything else of the pot, that's the spout, the stem, and the body. I'm gonna group that together, and now you can see we have one element, right? And I'm gonna name that the pot, I'm gonna name this uh, the mouth, okay? And let's grab the elements of the legs here. So we have a leg there and grab all those as well. And 
group them together. Okay, we'll leave that there for a second. Let's start with our cloud. Let's talk about the simplest form of creating an interactive component, and we'll kind of replicate that shaking style that we had um, in some of those music notes and those hearts, right? So first thing I wanna do is I have this element. I'm gonna rename it and call it cloud. Now, one thing that I like to do is go inside of my layer and realize that all of this stuff is actually inside of they're all vector elements, right? You have the back of the cloud and then all the little lines. I'm actually gonna draw a frame, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that I get that frame inside of my cloud, okay? So I wanna pop that in there and I wanna make sure that all of my elements are gonna actually be inside of this. So I'm gonna stretch this out. Let's get all those elements inside and then I'm gonna drag that out. I'm gonna get rid of the original group, okay? And then I'm gonna grab all the elements and group them again. And I'm gonna put them inside of a group called item. Why did I do that? Well, now I have a cloud and I have a frame. So we'll call, we'll rename the frame cloud. And you can kind of think of the frame as the stage for this individual animated element, right? I wanna be able to grab everything and move it around the stage. And that's how animation or interactive components are gonna work, right? If I wanna animate it from this side to this side, I'm gonna create a component with variance that moves it from side to side. But if we just have it inside of the frame like this, and then we just, we have a variant and we just move the frame, that's not gonna do anything. We need it to be on a stage, so to speak, all right? So with that said, uh, I'm just gonna make sure that my cloud is kinda anchored to the top left. That way I can resize my frame a little bit without worrying about it too much. All right, I'm gonna center it inside of my frame and I have the background on right now. We're not gonna keep it on, but what we are gonna do is take our cloud, it's our frame, and press Command uh, Option K, turn it into a component, and then immediately I'm going to hit Create Variant, okay? It's gonna put the little variant lines around it. It's exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's just zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see and we'll stop, we'll get away from our our rainbow up there, all right? Now, uh, I'm gonna immediately, I'm going to take the fill off of this, these, uh, I'll just hide the fill for the frames themselves. Uh, and then I'm gonna make sure that I rename them. So I'm gonna always just call these one and two. That's really the easiest way for me to remember is my property name is one and two. And then I'm gonna come into number two and I'm just going to rotate and maybe one I wanna rotate the other way a little bit, something like that, okay? So now when I animate from state to state, it's just going to go back and forth like so. Now let's talk about our interactions here. I'm gonna head up and tap prototype mode in the top right. And I have my cloud selected, the whole frame, and I'm gonna drag that down to the next frame. Now I'm gonna say not on click, but I'm gonna say after a delay, and what is that delay? Maybe 800 milliseconds. Let's go after 500. That's about half a second, right? I want to, and here's the magic, I want to change to the property number two. And let's just do it instantly, okay? Let's say we do it instantly. And then we'll do the same thing back. And I'll show you a couple of the basics here. So again, after delay, and maybe we'll do 500 milliseconds there. We want to change to the first one, and we want it to be instant. Okay, great. So now that that is a component, right, we can head over to our assets panel here and we can grab our cloud. Now let's get off of design mode and let's just bring out a couple iterations or instances of this cloud and let's press play again really quick. All right. So it's going to reload our prototype inside of Figma and you can see it has a half a second delay before it flips back and forth. Now you'll also see that I did the same thing with our little grass down here. I just have two different versions of grass, so it's on different timing. And so that's something we could do. We could create a second cloud if we wanted to that has different timing. But uh, you can see my little grasses up here, right? They're just on different timings. They're different delays and different timings. So I just get a little bit of variation. That's something you'll see throughout the rest of the tutorial. But this looks pretty good. If I wanted to instead, instead of just ticking it back and forth, maybe I want it to be a little bit more animated. All I'd have to do is go in and hit my line and say, hey, instead of instant, how about we smart animate and we smart animate and let's press play again. Beautiful. Now we get more like fun, smooth, smart animation. So it's up to you whether you wanna have that instant animation back and forth, stylistically it's up to you, or if you wanna smooth it out a little bit like we've done here. Okay, so I'm gonna move my cloud down out of the way. Now I think a fun, um, like a fun animation for a rainbow might be to see like some sort of fun shine 
to go across the whole thing, okay? Now you can see that our back piece is the size of the entire rainbow, okay? And then each one of these concentrically gets smaller. So I'm gonna do one thing really quick. I'm gonna take that back piece here, and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's filled with white, and I'm gonna tilt it in a little bit of a diagonal here. And I'm gonna put it over my uh, my piece of rainbow here, because what I wanna do is I wanna create a gleam or like a shimmer that every once in a while just goes across. That, that could be like a cool thing. So I'm gonna mess with my, uh, like my different layer styles, my blending modes here. Multiply, lighten, I think it's probably gonna be overlay. Overlay could be cool. Or how about color dodge or screen? Now let's go back to overlay and let's bring the, uh, the opacity of it down to about 50%. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, both of the elements there, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say use as mask. Now we can move this piece around and it can go across and be like this fun shimmer and shine that takes place, okay? So with that being said, I'm gonna kick it all the way out to the side, you can't see it, okay? And I'm gonna name that layer uh, shimmer, okay? So that's our shimmer. And let's zoom out here so you can see it. I'm gonna bring it down. Now here's another thing you can do is because it's an instance, I'm gonna take my cloud, I'm just gonna rotate it the other way. So we're gonna get a little bit of variation without having to create another cloud. If you want it to be even more variation, we can just press Shift H and horizontally flip our cloud around. Now they'll be going opposite, right? You can also scale a little bit and make this a smaller rainbow. So with just a few little kind of tweaks inside of the instance itself, you all of a sudden have a little bit of variation. Let's press play again and see how our prototype is coming. We should wait another second and we saw the little glimmer go by. Two, three, glimmer just keeps passing by. Now maybe that's a little quick, maybe you wanna slow it down, right? You can do that. And I think I actually do want to change it a little bit. So I'm just gonna to go to prototype again. I'm going to make the, uh, the gleam go across in one whole second. And I think I'll wait every five seconds for it. So let's go back and select this one more time, press play. And that should be a little bit more chill, right? Our clouds are dancing and the glimmer goes like that. That's a little smoother. I like that. Okay. All right. So now we have our cloud. Let's now do uh, something a little bit more complex. Let's do our teapot. Now we have some arms here and you'll see how the arms navigate. I'll just drag those in really quickly here and here. And I'll explain how the arms are actually working. So let's select our artboard. Let's take a look at those arms that I've already pre-animated and you'll see what's being done. Okay. So the arms are basically just hinging as, as good as you can get them to hinge in one area. Okay. And they're actually going down and up. And let's take a look at what I mean here. What I mean, the arms are going down and up. Let's take a look at our, uh, our animated elements or our interactive component. Like, like I said before, it's important to create a stage, right? Each one of these is on a stage and I created a hinge point inside. You can see, watch my little ellipse that pops up there. Okay, so I have a hinge point and I wanna keep it as much as I can on that hinge point, but I still want my arm to move up and down, okay? So that's why we create the stage space so that I could slide this arm up and down and all I had to do is hide those little hinges. Now, I also could have hinged it right here to the corner and I could have just easily made it wave kind of back and forth from one hinge. Uh, like for instance, our, our little um, leaves here, you'll see later on, they're doing that. I created a hinge point, that's the bottom right hand corner, and I'm just having it hinge from that spot to create that smooth animation. But this one, I want the arm to actually dip up and down. So I'm gonna take off that background, and you'll see why I want it to go up and down, because I think I want my teapot to kind of shrink a little bit, right? Okay, cool. So with this being said, uh, I think one thing I wanna do is, what where were those eyes? Those eyes kind of looked like your stock eyes here. I like those, there we go. We called those eye flower, okay? So let's, let's take a couple of those inside the assets. Let's look for that eyeball. I'm gonna find it. 
and I'm gonna scale it up to make it a little bit bigger and I'm just going to put it into place. And I think they were actually going the other way on the teapot. I'm gonna overlap them like that, okay? So now we have our eyes there. Um, okay, very cool, very cool. Um, now, do we need our eyes to be all together on our pot? What I actually need is my pot to kind of move up and down, I think. And I think I'll probably include the legs and I'll just tuck them behind um, like this. So I want my teapot to go up and down and shrink a little bit, kind of like it's just bouncing and dancing a little bit. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm, let me get my teapot in place and the legs the way I want them. And then uh, I'm going to grab the whole thing. And actually, I'm going to draw a frame around the whole thing so I have some space, right? Because we want a stage. There's our stage. And then I'm going to grab the elements inside. And uh, that'll work. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Well, maybe we want just the teapot to kind of bounce up and down like that. And what's cool is like you're kind of you're thinking it through, right? Creatively figuring out how you want it to animate. So I think this is a good start for him. I'm going to go to layers and I'm going to rename my layer uh, water pot. It's not a teapot. I think I said teapot. It's a water pot. And why don't we take water pot and then we will turn it into a component and add our variant. And when it kind of dips down, when it bops down, I want it to go low and I want this to just kind of shrink a little bit, the handle and and the, the whole size of the teapot to kind of just bop down a little bit, okay? Um, so that could be cool. That works for me. And then um, now we are creating, yeah, that, that, that seems like it's gonna work good. So I'm just gonna stretch out this, uh, this instance and then I'm going to make sure that both the background is off of both of them. Go to prototype and let's just drag that down and do the same thing. So we're going to say after we we'll want to change to after a delay of 800 milliseconds. Sure. Okay. We want to change to uh, variant two. There it goes. And we want it to smart animate. And then we want to do a similar thing going back. We want to say after a delay, we want to change to the default. We could have called it one and two. Now we're rushing. That's okay. And we want to smart animate back, but we want to probably ease out on both of these. I have a feeling. So let's ease out. Um, and then when we come back up, we don't want any delay though, right? So a small delay and it takes a second to get down and back up. That way there's a little delay at the top and then it goes down, pops up delay down and pops up. That's what we're looking for right there. Okay. Um, so with that being said, we have our teapot our water pot created. Let's jump in and see what it looks like if we drop him on the screen right here. All right. And let's check it again. We haven't put the face in yet. We haven't done any of that, right? Okay. So it kind of bops down. It's a little long on the dance, right? We want to just, just shorten that, I think, a little bit. So let's come back to prototype. And let's say it takes, instead of one whole second, we'll do 500 milliseconds, which is half of a second. Okay. So 500 milliseconds there. Good. Okay. Now we closed our prototype. That's good because otherwise sometimes it can kind of get clogged, um, you know, not work so well. Now that little dance is a little bit quicker and it's actually kind of matching our arms, which we, we had already anticipated. Okay. So let's put that right over here and let's get our arms and move those out of the way. That's working. And let's move that arm on top. And this arm can stay behind. Those are a little small. Somehow they got sized down. It's so, okay. We'll scale them up so they kind of match the rest of the design. Okay. Let's put that going right there. That looks very similar to our cartoon, I think. Um, now we're not moving the arms yet. We're kind of keeping the arms static. But inside of the animation, the arms had already moved, right? Because I was anticipating the movement of the can. So as the can shrinks, the arms go down. Now this is a lot of give and take, you know, when you when you play with the spacing, because there's a few ways to do these animations. You can kind of combine them right into multiple and group them together. Sometimes you can have performance issues or you can create each of these individual elements um, and kind of like anticipate the spacing that's needed or the next thing you can do is instead of creating a component out of something, you can just include a stock element like we're going to inside of our mouth here. 
right? We have our mouth. Let's just X that out of there really quickly and pop that inside of our default state, okay? So we could put our mouth, maybe something like right here. Um, and then we'll just copy that and we'll put that inside this version and we can change them a little bit, right? So we can grab these two elements like so and tweak them, you know, and then uh, grab these and move them up. So it looks like he's kind of smiling as he bops down. We could do something like that, okay? So we're taking a static element and just including it in the animation. So immediately, once we add the face, see how it dropped into the instance we have on our artboard or on our frame. But now everything should move and we get everything happening there. Now we, we were able to do that because we're really including the, all those static elements inside. We could have done that with the arms as well, right? If you wanted to, instead of creating separate elements. But I thought maybe I might use those in the future for some other character, all right? So the last thing we have is our eyes. Let's see if we can get our eyes inside of our teapot. All right, now with that done, all we have to do is assemble the rest of our elements that are already animated into place, right? So we can put these here and we have these cute little hearts going right there. All right, it loads up inside and we get a little bit of dancing, a little bit of moving, even the shadow is kind of animating a little bit. Uh, we could have probably done a better job with the legs and done some fun action there. Um, but we get some of the animation is kind of clicking back and forth. Some of it is smooth. Uh, we still get the glimmer on our rainbow as it travels through. Um, but it's pretty cool, <laughs> pretty cute little animation and it's done all in Figma. Now let's add a, a few last minute little details to it. Um, I have a few other assets up top here that I'm going to bring down. And one of them is just a noise layer that I'm going to drop on top of the whole thing. Uh, so it fills the entire canvas. And the other one is actually a animated GIF of kind of some uh just some static and some noise so now you can zoom in you can see we have a little bit of static there a little bit of noise we'll press play one more time and see that animated gif is just adding a little bit of film grain to it and you get that noise on top of the whole thing just adds a little bit of detail a little bit of fun now maybe you're out there and you're asking yourself jesse why would i even do this it seems like a lot of work a lot of time spent on something that maybe is not practical could i ever use it and to that i say let me show you a quick application of how something like this could be used i've gone ahead and just mocked up a quick little site that has maybe like a job board underneath it and a fun little animated scene and we can just press play on that and see your actual animated scene come to life on a website now you have done you've added so much value so much kind of a unique fun energy to your site because you've taken the time to just add a little bit of that animation so that's just a really simple quick uh, example of how you might be able to apply this to your actual design work well, that's it. That's our animated cartoon scene inside of Figma using interactive components and timing and easing and delays and all that fun stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to be doing this kind of animation inside of Figma? Why or why not? Let me know down in the comment section. If you want to get a hold of this starting file, remember, you can always sign up to become one of my design champions, one of my members. You'll have access to this file as well as every other file. And if you're interested in learning more techniques like this inside of Figma about UI design, mobile design, animation, Figma fundamentals. I have a workshop coming up on November 26, 2021. You can sign up for that and find the link down below. Tickets are selling out, so make sure you jump on them while early bird prices are still left. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. I hope you're having a little bit of fun. Just stop and have some fun every once in a while with your design work. I'll see you in the next one.